we have just hit the monthly VWAP support on Bitcoin. And of course, in yesterday's video, I was explaining how this really is an important support zone for Bitcoin, because if we lose this, we can absolutely expect a much larger drop to come. And I just had this wonderful comment, somebody paying attention, they see that we hit the monthly VWAP, and now they have the question of, is this a buy opportunity, or is there actually still weakness, and you know, it's not expected to hold for lower? Uh, thank you for all I do. And I wanted to reply to this question. I thought I'm going to do this in a video format. Why not? It's a much easier for myself and I can explain it in much, uh, you know, much more depth and detail for you all. So I really believe that this video is going to be very beneficial. OK, I'm going to be talking about the probabilities of Bitcoin, of course. Uh, what I am looking at next and really whether this support that we're hitting into right now is enough for a long trade and how my outlook of Bitcoin is over the, I would say this video is going to be focused on really, yeah, probably again, the next few weeks of price action. So I hope that you really enjoy it. But the most important thing for me in this video, my mission is to educate you. I really want you to walk away with this video with more knowledge, insights on these charts and a higher feeling of confidence. As always, I'll keep it very transparent and honest with you in this video. So Let's go into what we're talking about and is this a good level to long on Bitcoin for that buy opportunity? So, of course, we are now into the monthly VWAP. This is what I would class as an important zone. We never look at it as an exact level, but an important zone of support. We got a little bit of a wick onto it once last night, and then we come down for a little bit of an intraday, we could say SFP of the low. And so a lot of people will be uh, thinking this as a uh, the buy opportunity, right? And so I want to just first of all, I want to bring this to a point that I made in yesterday's, and it was a it was a bold statement, right? I done it to grab attention, and that is because a lot of people are instantly going to be thinking what? Uh, and it was I do not know what is happening next on Bitcoin. And of course, what I mean by this is I do not know with 100% certainty what's happening on Bitcoin, but I do have my own statistics and my own methods of working out high probability outcomes of Bitcoin. So I am going to refer you to a post that I made for the champions yesterday. And this was yesterday morning, and I simply put here, right now, I would say it's a higher probability that lower comes next. OK, doesn't mean I'm going to just ape into a short trade at that moment in time, but I am looking at the charts. I am recognizing the weakness and the reasons, of course, I listed to them. <laughs> uh, I was recognizing the weakness and I came up with the outcome that, you know, really simply it's a higher probability that lower comes next. Well, here we are 24 hours later and we can see that lower did come next. So, you know, what I want to emphasize here greatly is that, you know, I, I stick with a statement that I made yesterday of that title. I do not know with 100% certainty what's happening next on Bitcoin. Nobody knows that. It's impossible, right? It's impossible to know exactly with 100% certainty what's happening next. But we can have very high probabilities of what's happening next, right? And we get that through the statistics. We get that through you know, simply trading, journaling, running statistics, making strategies, understanding context, okay? We can use that information, put it all together, formulate a trading strategy, right? And then work out at any point of time, where is the highest probability of where price is going next? But again, we do not know in terms of being absolutely 100% guarantee where it's going next. We look at the probabilities and we make those informed decisions. Yesterday I said it was a higher probability of lower. Here we are, we got lower. So now we have hit into that monthly VWAP, okay? So an important support level. So as the question was, do we now have a long trade? And something that I also was talking about, um, this was only for the members, but I want to talk about it very briefly now. And that is something that I'm going to uh, bring you up on. And this is the fact of trading. OK, and again, I want to keep this video honest for you all. And that is that in trading, you have to understand that every trader has their own perspective of the chart. Right. And this is the, the funny thing. Right? And why I enjoy trading so much that you could have 100 traders in front of you. Right. And we're all looking at the exact same chart, but you could have a hundred different opinions. So how do you work out of all those opinions? Who should I follow? Who, who's going to be correct? OK, and of the hundred traders, if I'm sat alongside, uh, you know, 99 other professional traders, 
okay? I'm not going to be swayed by their analysis. I'm not going to be paying attention to their analysis. Even if you put next to me somebody that's uh, classed as the best trader in the world, they've made all this profit, I I'm going to trade my own analysis, okay? I'm going to listen to my own plan. So first of all, I would never be swayed by what anyone else is thinking, even if they have 99 other plans. I trade my plan, okay? And what we would be looking at is in terms of, again, you would hope that other professional traders are running their statistics, right? So we can all have our own statistics because I don't feel that every trader is going to have the same, okay? That's because we all have our own strategies, right? We all have our own, way, our own ways of working things out. And so what I would bring it down to is understanding what is a high probability trade, okay? So when we do that, that's the important question that we're looking at next. What is a high probability trade? Daniel, you come into these videos and on some videos you say, I'm not taking a trade here because it's not a high probability. Other times I'll come into a video and say, you know, I have high confidence in a continuation to the upside. I'm looking to long uh, the intraday view app. I feel this is a good setup. Yeah, that, that, that you know, this is the trade I'm looking for. So how can I differentiate between having such high confidence and wanting to take a step back, remain patient and not taking that active trade? OK, so that we need to come back over to the chart, right? So how do I class a high probability trade setup? I would say it all comes down to confluence. OK, so what do we mean by confluence? It's where we're looking at several different technical levels coming together to form a strong zone of support or resistance. And with that high level of confluence, we could say that that has a high probability of holding. For me, I do not base it only on confluence. I could have what you might think is a strong level of confluence, but still not be interested in the trade. Why? Because I have two more factors that are important. Number Factor number one, okay, along with that confluence is liquidity. OK, is that level of confluence sat, for example, in the middle of single prints? which is a much lower probability thus and less interesting trade, or is it sat on a major level of liquidity thus more interesting to myself, what I would class as increasing the probabilities. And factor number two is the context, and that's why I will always, always start buying my, my analysis, even in my own time, not on stream, by looking at the past few days of price action, okay, reminding myself what's going on, because only with the information and knowledge and understanding of what has just happened because it's what has just happened that brings us up to where we are right now, right? That is the context of the market. If we just look at the market right now, how can I make any form of decision, even if we're hitting into confluence? Let's say we've just hit into five levels we have marked out. If I just look at this on the chart, how on earth can I make a decision of where price is going? I need to zoom out. I need to review recent price action. And of course, I could bring that a step further and bringing it further and further out, looking at more context, more data, which I believe is helpful. And that is why I look at the higher term time frames too, even as a scope trader. OK, um, you know, I'm reviewing all those time frames because it all helps me make informed decisions. So <clears throat> basically, those are the three ways that I work out what is a high probability trade. So bringing it back to, um, you know, what do we have here on Bitcoin? We have the monthly VWAP. We have now, of course, a tapped. Uh, daily naked point of control. So we have two levels, but then when we look at the context, what's happened here? So let's bring it down to a 30 minute chart. We are currently, um, you know, if you bring this over, let me bring this over to a TPO chart for you. Okay, so we'll come over to TPO and you can see, okay, right here we have some single prints, so SP. We currently have filled the top row of single prints, as you can see. And, you know, this is technical analysis for you. Why was the exact width put in here? Well, if you look left towards those single prints, row of single prints, here you have a double block. Look at the end of that double block, the top of these row of single prints, and then look to the right. Bam, 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 bam. That wick is on the exact top of this row of single prints. Okay. Always will tell you <laughs> there is never a random pivot in the market. Okay, we have to look at the technical analysis, look at this data, and again, this is what's giving us the moves. This is what gives us them um, strategies. This is what gives us probabilities. So this wick put in on the top row of these single prints after filling very nicely this first row. Okay, so that all stems back from this move to the upside. Overall, this is a bit of an inefficiency, I would say. And again, this now comes down, I, I will be honest with you, and as, as I was honest yesterday, right, it's, it's a simple case that um, trading is not easy. 
it's easy for myself as I have extremely good knowledge of all of these different tools. You know, I don't forget to look at things. I, I, I'm very much, um, yeah, you know, I have a good method and I'm, I'm, yeah, I think it all comes down to my methods. Right. And, and so I have a good method of just analyzing these things very quickly as well. It doesn't take me more than a few minutes to know whether I have a trade or not, but nevertheless, um, it, it, it's not quite, simple and easy right when we start having to look at things such as uh context you have to build up a case looking at things such as single prints you know these are fairly complex methods but again if you want to learn this i teach everything that i do here so <clears throat> yeah if you want to learn you, you're more than welcome we got that that for you but yeah to make it simple what we have right now is we've filled the single prints we've got a bit of an intraday swing failure pattern and what i would say this comes down to now is your perspective or your time frame of trading you know if, if you're a one minute trader if you're down on the very low term time frames could you pull a long trade off of that well the answer is yes okay if you're a very low term time frame trader which gets good entries part of being a good scalp trader is by getting those sniper level entries uh you know when i was scalping heavily 2018 2019 on stream right you, you saw it time after time i would i would get dollar low dollar high entries and so if you're a good trader you would be getting these dollar entries, okay, right on the pinpoint precision. That's what you strive for as a scalp trader, right? I did personally not take this long trade here because I'm not so focused on these one minute charts anymore. I've adjusted my trading style. I'm still looking at lower term time frame, but I, I sway away from those one minute trades any, you know, simply on Bitcoin now. But, you know, if you did take it, if you are those lower term time frames, of course, there's a trade and you would actually be sat in profits right now, right? From that, from that, absolute fill of the low look at this you've already bounced up over one percent to the upside coming into what i would say would be your first take profit one on this high really simply then that would be your higher liquidity right so you make over a percentage profit even if you got in a little bit later say you're a conservative trader you don't want to go for the pinpoint sniper entry you wait to see that reaction and you enter around just above sixty thousand seven hundred. that's what i would say is a conservative entry by the way if you're a scalp trading any later than this and you've, you've clearly missed the move but you've got the reaction off the top of those single prints you've got to enter the trade uh if you're waiting around you you miss the move and and yeah as simple as that so you, even if you entered here, you're still looking for a total gain of 0.7% uh, for take profit one or full close of the trade. And one thing that I do want to say very quickly here is that a lot of people sometimes that say to me, Daniel, you're, you're um, showing trades, you know, not only this one, of course, but I show many trades. You're showing trades where the gain is 0.5%. How am I going to make any money after fees? Uh, the fees are killing me. And I always, I always kind of find that, that a kind of a strange statement in my opinion, <laughs> uh, because the, the, the fees, even a, even on a 0.5% win, the, the fee, what, you're, you're, you're taking maximum, I would say, even if you're a low uh, volume trader, what, 0.02%, max, 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 0.2%, right? So you, you are still walking away with profit even after fees uh, with these types of trades. So that, that's one thing that I just... Thought of, thought of there that sometimes people struggle to think oh zero point five percent how can i make money well e even if you're paying max fees there's still money to be made on zero point five percent move by the way but and of course the, this is why i like to trade on bybit right because the more volume you trade with the lower those fees get <laughs> so uh yeah you know you can get that down to pretty much zero uh if you're trading with high volume but again that is very high volume but hey uh, i've got it <laughs> so it's just what you what you got to play around with and something to bear in mind and we are back. As I was saying, if you are a lower term time frame trader, absolutely, you had a long trade entry there. If you are a swing trader and you're looking on like a higher term time frame chart, I would say no, you don't have that same entry trigger. Okay, you haven't hit what I would say is enough support for a swing trade as a swing trader's entry. But if you are on the lower term time frames, of course, you had that trade entry. And that's where you, you only you can do this, determine what type of trader do you want to be? Do you want to be on the lower term time? frames reading the order flow sniper trading these entries or do you want to take the more um you know what i would say relaxed viewpoint where you have time to make your plans plan out the trades take things more slowly swing trader style that's for you to decide right um either way you can both make money you can make money with swing trading you can make money with scalp trading you just gotta adjust to the style that really fits you um so yeah what i would say then in terms of do you have a high probability trade setup right now well if you're a scalp trader 
Well, you did have it at the low. Do you have one now? No, you, you've missed that long as a scalp trader, right? You're now up into that take profit one level. So in that regards, I think you've missed the trade. Okay, so now really from a perspective by the time this video is released, do you have a long trade entry? I personally would say no, okay, because I feel one, you've missed it by the time this video is up. No, even now live when we're speaking, you've missed that trade entry. And if you are more of a swing trader at this point in this row of inefficiency, you would be looking for lower, okay? So then you would have two options. And this is the method that i would be looking at here you have intraday a ccv setup by the way so if we get the acceptance above previous day value area low we do have a bullish ccv setup do you be really waiting for one of two things okay and that would be a further drop to the downside where the more you drop as a long trade perspective the 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 better right if you are a bull and you want to take a long you want to see a, as much drop as possible and so I would be under the perspective of waiting for lower to come. And of course, you have two areas of interest, right? The overall parallel channel low, which sits at around 58, uh, let's just say $58,500. And then you have the lows from Wednesday the 1st. So basically make a new monthly low and taking out that. And then we all know, right, if you don't hold, you trade it level to level to the downside. Um, so that, that's the, personally the, the perspective that I would take if you have miss this long trade if you're waiting for a better long trade okay you would be waiting for lower down and in terms of rise to the upside you have that ccv setup right and again the biggest level above us in my opinion still sits at 67400 so you're actually in a bit of a place right now but i would say you don't have any high probability trade setups your highest probability short is all the way back up at 67,400. Your highest probability long is all the way down, in my opinion, towards 50,000. So then you have to make a decision yourself once again, right, of how are you going to approach that? Are you happy to not take a trade on Bitcoin and actually wait patiently for a high probability trade setup? Or do you want to take more of a lower term time frame perspective and understand you don't have any good swing trades, but you can come down here on the one minute charts, five minute charts, and there are trades to be had and there is profit to be made. OK, or alternatively, and this is something that I am doing. I am waiting patiently on Bitcoin. And then while I'm waiting patiently on Bitcoin, I'm trading some altcoins, even some altcoins that I haven't touched for a while. <laughs> OK, um, so ones that I've even said are dead. Right. So there are opportunities on alts recently, as you may or may not know. I made some nice call on Pepe and Pepe has actually been my biggest win of the year. So my biggest win this year is not Bitcoin <laughs> uh, trade. It's actually been a Pepe long trade. So um yeah, I, I feel that that's where a lot of the opportunity is right now. Bitcoin, yes, it's fairly slow, in my opinion. It's not giving the best trade setups every single day. We're getting good setups, but maybe once a week. So while we're remaining patient on Bitcoin, there are a lot of altcoins to take advantage of. OK, Pepe is just one of many, right? Um, but yeah, this is almost pumps nearly now actually when we think about it, nearly a hundred percent to the upside since i first called this uh in the group it's been going very well right that was back on the fourth by the way when i was waiting for sixty four thousand. as you all know that actually come up and tapped sixty four thousand dollars came back down but anyway pepe like th that's where the opportunity is and this is something that i wanted to talk about very quickly because uh this actually brought back it is thursday it is throwback thursday and this is something that i want to just pay, spend a few minutes on before we um wrap it up and and you'll have to let me know if you enjoy these sections or not because it's fairly off ta or a little bit i suppose but i wanted to throw back thursday to shiba coin uh shiba renu and if you were around at the time i hope you made some insane profits with me but uh this was back from january 2021 where this was a one sat coin and you can see here the amount of percentage gains since then but uh, that was an all-time high of course but this was back in january the 30th, 2021, calling Shiba Inu coin at 0 0.00000, literally the one sat, the absolute low. This guy buying 20 billion Shib for the pump back in January 2021. Others following along with me, of course, I also bought Shib at the time. And people were starting to get into this back in January 2021 from the first person that you will see in the world calling Shiba coin back then. Of course, this went on to make myself <laughs> some very healthy profits and others. 
somebody actually cashing out with well at the point here i actually know some champion members they messaged me with a with a lot of thanks that made you know we're talking eight some nine figure profits right this is insane millions of profits uh from a simple call that i made on shiba Inu back in 2021 it was insane right some of these people have gone totally offline. You're never going to see them again. Others are still around. But uh, yeah, we made a lot of profit off of Sheep, right? And for me, this is like then some point of like reflecting. Wow. Of course, the next thing we want to do is find that next big sheep bump. I personally, by the way, have sold it. I know everyone wants to know about my sheep, right? I did sell all of my sheep. Okay. I didn't sell it for the maximum profit. At one point, I was in high nine figures of profit, right? This is like insane. But I didn't manage to sell it all for that because I was waiting for another all-time high swing failure pattern liquidity. I actually cashed it out uh, since over the course of a year, just slowly selling it, not for the maximum amount of profit, unfortunately, because I was waiting for an SFP of all-time high, which never happens. So I had to sell it at less profit, but nevertheless, it was nice. And then I personally did all donate all of my profits to those in need. And, uh, you know, this is something that I want to just then spend like a few minutes of reflection on. And I think this is like a, a nice way to wrap it up in, you know, how I like to approach my channel at the moment. And that is, of course, always focused on technical analysis, uh, always focused on trading, but trying to bring in some, I don't want to try and bring it in necessary, but just add in a little bit at the end. And if you don't like it, you can click off, right? It's as simple as that. But I think it's so important for myself to, to remind myself, but also maybe inspire others. That would be brilliant, right? Of always thinking of what we what we can do, because in trading, if you are good at trading, you, you can make crazy amounts of profits, right? I was, yeah, I think the crazy amount of profits, um, profits that you're never going to ever need. And you can have then your life spinning in two different ways. And I have experienced both of these ways, and that's how I have made mistakes and I've learned from them. You, you can go the path of, um, you know, Having this money, wanting to flaunt this money, buying all the cars, buying all the girls, doing whatever you want. You, you, you can feel on top of the world, right? You've got, it feels like unlimited amounts of money. If you need more money, you take another trade, right? It's, it's very easy to go down this, in the time feels good, right? But it's, it's I, I view it as a very dark path, a, a very lost path, let's say. You can become very lost and you can fill yourself with this level of, um emptiness when i look back on my life and think at, at the point where i was starting to go out and party too much really just spending money for a hell of it and and you know I, I look back on it and i do feel that was a very empty part of my life right i was just you know the famous saying spending money to impress people that you don't even care about and i, I look back and I, and I think that was a very sad point in my life and I, of course, at the time learned so much. Uh, I, luckily, I didn't go too off the rails, right? I was still very, I was still kind of grounded, but it was, it could have got a lot worse than what I, than what I got to, right? Uh, but I managed to really find help, find support. Um, and for the main thing for me as well, right? I, I also found God. And I know a lot of people uh, want to say all this sort of stuff. But hey, I also found God. And for me, that has been a massive uh, positive factor in my life. And so I, I also think when it comes to money, you can spend it selfishly. You know, you, you never see me posting Lamborghinis. You never see me flaunting money left, right and center, right? I, I feel I'm very humbled and grounded. And that is because I don't feel that's the best use of money again people can do whatever they want i don't i don't want to tell you what to do with your money but i just think if you think you have it in your heart again you, this is always a double-edged sword because if i talk about doing donations people are like hey you should do donations without talking about it and on the other hand if i can inspire some people or just talk about this experience people might open themselves up to it right it's, it's a double-edged sword I, I cannot win <laughs> but i personally um donate a lot of a lot of my profits and profits that i have made in the past like for for example that shiba coin nades i just want you to imagine right buying it at a sat at this thing making um <laughs> a lot of profits right several hundred thousands percent of profits you can cut maybe you can imagine the, the the level of money that was made off of this but I donated it all i could have done a lot of different things with that but uh, for me, hey, it was surplus anyway. It's not like I needed it. But for me, it, it just comes back down to thinking also that relationship with God. You 
um, by me even talking about this, maybe can influence. I was a massive atheist, by the way. I was a, an extremely big atheist, and and I, I want to talk about this in a whole different video. But I was a massive atheist. I had no beliefs, and then you know I had these experiences, had these happenings, and uh, you know I, I, you could say I found God, He found me. I, I, I'm still learning. I'm a, I'm a noob in this. I, I'm improving myself every day, but I, I'm a, definitely a noob when it comes to this. But um, you know I, I found my faith, and and I'm really devoted and really trying to improve. But you do not need that to donate right you can still help people out and i will always say this i want to try and wrap it up very swiftly but it's not just about donating money it's also about donating time uh when you just think about for a second how much people are lonely okay and i myself have been lonely as well right so you can have money and still be lonely by the way but try and think of people that are are, are genuinely lonely maybe um you can help out so many people by just donating your time, going and speaking to people, right? Just speak to people, meet somebody on the street. You know, there is a lot of homeless. And I know there's always this thing of uh, homeless because of drug use. It's very, it's another difficult conversation, right? Of how, how you can go about your time. But of course, you always want to take care and, and, and stay safe. But you can also just spark up conversations with random people on the street, the cashier, the, you know, if you want to buy some food and give it to a homeless person, that that would make people very, very, very happy. And you're not doing it for your own feeling of happiness, but to genuinely, like you genuinely want to help. And that's why you got to do these things, because it, it comes from your heart. If you're doing it to feel good, if you're doing it to show off, it's not really um gonna be looked upon really as good you, you have to do it because you want to do it but if you find I, I honestly i honestly think this if you find it in your heart to want to help others um you will start to receive just I, you could say karma but you'll start to receive things back into your heart okay so let's bring this over here right you give as much as you can, and in turn, you will receive a lot more. And I, I truly believe that the, the more happiness and positivity that you're spreading, the more that is going to come back into you uh, from several different ways. OK, so you, I think it all comes down to the perspective, how you carry yourself, how e even people that you hang around with, uh, people that you look up to, you know, all of this kind of who you surround yourself with has such a massive impact. When I look back on my life of, you know, when I was partying, when I was, um, you know, just uh, spending money like the, like it was nothing, I, I was surrounding myself with um let's just say negative influences at that point of my life. Okay. And that was a decision, of course, I made. And I, I have to, you know, learn from that mistake decision. Uh, and now I surround myself with much more positive, focused minded people. Okay. I'm doing, I've always been charitable. But I'm doing my, my things and I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to, to help in that regards, you know, sharing blessings with people that, um, they like have, 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 have yeah, I, I, just trying to do my best. And 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 in turn, I've been blessed myself massively above any sort of monetary value gains, right? I, 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 I don't want to go into it. But anyway, all I'm trying to say is you give genuinely from your heart and you start to receive things um, that are, are, are unimaginable, right? So, yeah, I just wanted to end with that. I, I, I sometimes feel a little bit uncomfortable because I'm like, oh, I don't know whether, how much to go into this. Just uh, please, if you've made it this far, I, I can see that you have interest. Leave me a comment down below. I honestly love to read the comments. They do inspire me. They do. Um, they, I, I love that interaction with you guys watching this and girls. Um, and yeah, for, for me, yeah, leave, leave a comment down below if you've enjoyed this. What would you like to hear? Do you think I should expand upon these things? Let me know everything down below. I'm, I'm genuinely very interested. And um, yeah, this video was technical analysis. The channel is always going to be trading and technical analysis, but I do think I have a bit of a space and a platform to try and um, do my best um, of spreading positivity. Let's just say that. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you enjoyed. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've talked about what is a high probability setup. I've given you a little bit of uh, insights into that. Wait for confluence, read the conflicts, look at liquidity. Okay, I've talked about how you can have lower term time frame trade entries if you're a very good trader, but you do need to be able to uh, sniper entries or have high confidence after a reaction. And if you miss, you know, if you hesitate too much, you're going to miss trades. And I've talked about how from a swing traders perspective, I would personally wouldn't class this as a swing traders entry. For that, you are going to have to be waiting for higher or lower. And while you wait for a higher probability, thus lower in the chart or higher because here you don't have it 
there are plenty of altcoin trade setups to be had. I will end with the final announcement that if you are interested in live trading, of course, the other coaches have been doing live trading. I myself am now going to be introducing live trading this month. I will be every week on stream, coming on the stream, taking my trades on the exchange so you can see the exact trades I'm taking and following the progress week after week. And um, yeah, if you want my live trading, then you're going to have it basically. So uh, I personally feel that this is going to be extremely beneficial. And, you know, I, I think it's it's a major, major plus for the service, which was already pretty epic, if you think about it, of everything that we've done here. If you want to learn to trade, we got the whole educational library. Uh, you know, others in comparison, I want to say are... I'm not going to make any comments on that. Let's just say uh, we got a we got a very in-depth educational library. The strategies that you see around the internet have come from us. And what I'm going to be saying is my final words. If you want to see me every day in the Discord, if you want the daily live stream updates, if you want that live trading from myself and the other coaches, chartchampions.com. I hope that you've very much enjoyed this video. Maybe I've inspired you, maybe I haven't, but at least I've talked you through what you were here for originally and that is the charts thank you ever so much i am remaining patient and during that there are some alts to be had thank you ever so much hope you've enjoyed and final words we did have the altcoin update today by the way so if you want to check it out two hours ago altcoin update went through several different altcoins or seven right went through several different altcoins um so yeah hope you've enjoyed thank you ever so much and that's me signing out goodbye cheers